In my opinion, an emergency alarm should not just be loud and ear piercing. An alarm that's just loud and ear piercing might get the job done, but it'll come off as a noisemaker that's just loud and annoying to a lot of people. An emergency alarm should not only be loud and obnoxious, but unique enough to invoke a psychological response within a population that triggers the realism of the potential situation. If an alarm makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and it makes you stop and consider the message that is being communicated, then I think the modulation of that alarm was well designed. I find that alarms that almost sound spooky generally do a great job at this. The pitch should be distinguished from other sounds in the environment, making it more noticeable and recognizable. In the disaster and emergency management field, there have been two emergency notification sounds that I think were well made and strongly fit this criteria. The first being FEMA's emergency phone alert sound. And the second sound being alternate wail, which is most commonly heard on outdoor emergency warning siren systems. Welcome to System Test 22 on the Firelight and Wheelock Voice Evacuation Fire Alarm Demonstration Board. Today we're going to be testing, you guessed it, alternate wail exclusively on the general hazard portion of the system. For alarms, I have the new EST EG4 SV. This alarm is very easy to install, it's very installer friendly. I've had a very positive experience with this alarm, which is nice. And that one subscriber that sent me this alarm also did send in the special GRSW wiring plate that is required to, in order to use this alarm. So you'll see more of this in the video. The strobe will not be flashing in the video, it is LED. However, we'll be testing the hazard portion. And if it is a tornado emergency, you don't want a fire strobe to be flashing. But the speaker part of it can still be used for general notification and mass notification purposes. So that is what will be making the sound today. And then coming over to the left, I have the Wheelock RSSA-24MCW blue alert strobe. Wait, hold on a minute. I thought you had an amber alert strobe. Well, I do. However, I was able to switch the strobe cover over from my amber alert strobe over to this one. So I do have a blue strobe now. It's a very, very delicate process, but it can be done. And here is the old cover which if I want the amber one back on that, then I can switch it over again. The pull station today is a SCC SG-42CXK1. It has some custom alert alarm and tornado stickers on it, indicating that you would pull this during a tornado emergency. And the message coming out of the speaker today is simply alternate will from a federal signal modulator 2 outdoor warning siren system. Well, if you don't know by now, I am a huge fan of the alternate will sound. I know it sounds a little weird and it sounds a little spooky, but in my opinion, an unusual sounding alarm that still sounds serious will be taken seriously. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and activate the pull station and set off the alarm. Here we go.
I had the wrong key there. <laughs> So fun fact about the EST EG4 SV LED speaker strobe, when you take off the front cover, there are a series of switches. And with these switches, you can actually control all the functions of the alarm. So you have your watt settings up in this corner. Below that, you have your volt settings. It's right now set on 25 volts, but it can also do 70 volts. And then over on this side, you have all your candela settings. As far as your watt settings, also kind of known as the volume settings. Uh, it's right now set on one watt, but you can change it to as high as two watts and as low as one fourth watt. And you can actually do that while the alarm is turned on. So I'll go ahead and turn on the alarm again by pulling it and I'll show you how loud it can get and how quiet it can get. Here we go. One watt, or no, that's actually a half watt. That's one watt, half watt, and then a fourth watt. Wait for it to turn on again. That's its quietest setting, pretty quiet. That's the loudest setting. Well, the system has now been reset and it's back in normal condition. I'll go ahead and close and lock up the fire alarm control panel. Thank you all for watching this test. I know I didn't test the fire alarm part, but we will definitely test it out in the next video. There's something kind of unique with this alarm, but you'll have to wait and see. I thought I'd focus more on the concept behind alternate whale in this video, but uh, if you want to see more, definitely check out some of my other videos and subscribe. I have a ton of videos about all this right here, which is my fire alarm safety equipment collection. <laughs> And then I also have a whole separate fire alarm demonstration board right here that I make videos on. And then I have a very realistic fire alarm system that is in the garage. So I got a panel, a pole station, an alarm, and some smoke detectors and all of it. So definitely check out some other videos on my channel if you've made it this far. And uh, rate, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.